Uh, this week I'm having a test drive of the newly released Volkswagen E-Up. So it was about six years ago that I test drove a very small, compact, electric city car and I loved it. It had a range of probably 70 to 80 miles, but I didn't care. It was brilliant to drive and then suddenly this turned up. It's the same car, but much, much better. So this is the Volkswagen E-Up exclamation mark and this is fully charged. Ooh. So since 2014, when I last drove the VW E-Up exclamation mark, um, I haven't really thought about it and I'd forgotten, basically I'd forgotten what a brilliant car this is. And what is just really good news, because at the moment I think we all need as much good news as we can get because there's plenty of lousy news. But I think what is interesting about this car is Volkswagen is still making it. It's not going to be replaced by the ID. They're going to keep making this. They won't keep making the VW E Golf, but they're making the E up exclamation mark. And uh, I think that is a really good sign because this is a brilliant little car. So I'm just going to go back a bit and I'm going to recap some of the things I knew about the, the E up when, when I first drove it uh, back in 2014. Actually, I think it was 2013 I actually drove it. I put the show out on. Uh, fully charged on 24 in 2014. The Volkswagen E-Up exclamation mark is a lovely little car. It's the electric version of the already popular petrol powered up exclamation mark. It's a small, as they say, city car, but it feels nice and roomy inside. It is built as a petrol or electric car, so from the very basic design of this car, it was always built to be either. So you can have this car with a petrol engine, and this is where the similarities with the Mini E come in, is that you can have this as a, a, a petrol car, but the way it's designed is you have a basically a big tray of batteries right underneath the car, which gives it much more uh, ability to have bigger batteries and longer range. And this car has a realistic range today in this weather, which is lousy and it's cold. It's currently 7.5 degrees centigrade. It's really horrible. I've just really thrashed it down a motorway and, and it has a realistic range of 150 miles plus. In the summer, you would get way more than that. Now, the one I drove back in 2014 had a realistic range of about 80 miles. So that shows what's happened. Same car, same size battery, greater capacity in the battery. So uh, I think it's a really good, you know, I felt really confident when I drove it today. I've driven 53 miles this morning to get to where we're filming now. And it was just not even, in, I wasn't thinking, ooh, I better charge it. There's nothing like that. It just really does go. So the original one had an 18 and a half kilowatt hour battery. This one has a 32 and a half kilowatt hour battery. Same car, same size, same weight. It's really interesting how that stuff is really shown. So that is what, six years. In six years they've done that. But what really keeps me chuffed is if you're looking for a small, sensible, car that's really easy to park. It doesn't have a huge amount of room, but the back seats have a lot more room than the Mini E. The, the, the trunk slash boot space is about the same as the Mini E. It's cheaper than the Mini E. It's a really difficult one. Are electric cars getting cheaper? Yes. Do they go further? Yes. Just two little things there than they did, you know, six years ago. So it's a 32 kilowatt hour battery uh, and uh, it's got a 61 kilowatt motor which gives it a 0 to 60 speed of 11.9 seconds. So you know, you're not talking about performance vehicle here, you're talking a sensible car that you can just drive around in and not, when it's horrible weather like this, not get wet and not be cold. You know, that's, I, I think those things we forget because we take these things for granted. I think those things are really, really important. Can I drive around it on a lousy day and the weather's okay? You know, that's, that's kind of important. Yeah. 
I have just spent the last, while we were rigging the, cam the cameras up for the car, I spent that entire time trying to get the VW e Connect app to work. So I put the VIN number in, I put in my details, da 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 da, it went on and on and on, and it would not connect. So that is a massive, massive fail, Volkswagen. I want that stuff to work easily. Other people, okay, one other company does that, and it's so incredibly easy and reliable to have an app that connects to the car. You know, I don't want to say Tesla, but it's Tesla. Why can Tesla do it? Why can't Nissan do it? Why can, is it a hassle with a Renault? Why is it a hassle with a Volkswagen? You're big companies that should be able to do this stuff. You know, that stuff is useful, particularly with an electric car. It's really a good thing to be able to turn on your heating when the car's plugged in first thing in the morning and you'd want to get in it and go somewhere. You don't reduce the range, the car's warm when you get in it, and off you go. I mean, that is a, a big advantage of an electric car. You don't have to run an engine for 20 minutes to warm it up and burn fuel unnecessarily. All that stuff is really useful. I cannot make it connect, and I've really, really tried. And I've done all the things. It, what it won't do, you have to put in the mileage in the vehicle. And, it w and I can see how many miles it's done. This car has done 430 miles when I was trying to do it. I can see it. It says max total distance, 430 miles. And I kept putting 430, and then they just said, the mileage is wrong, the mileage is wrong, again and again. Really frustrating to go through that whole process. Put in the VIN number, put in your phone number, put in everything. You know, res prove that it, the, your email address is the one you put in, all that stuff. Ah. Oh just that is just sort that out it's not that hard i know other people can do it so the other thing it does tell me but it won't tell me now it's got a very peculiar oh there we go so it's doing an average god that is amazing 4.3 miles to the kilowatt hour uh, so we'll put underneath this, we'll put what that is in terms of kilometres. But that is pretty good considering the temperature, the weather and the way I've been driving it. So about 80% of that driving at this point has been on motorways, so at speed. And I also want to point out that the motorway that I use to come here goes over some serious hills. It's not a flat motorway like you might get in the Netherlands or Belgium. It's a bumpy motorway with up bits. <laughs> and if you're doing 70 miles an hour up a hill in an electric car, you use more power than if you're doing 70 miles an hour along a flat road. Just so you know. And straight, interestingly, you also use more uh, liquid fuels if you've got a combustion vehicle. <laughs> oh, there, there's the chargers up there. That's good. I'm not going to uh, uh, pretend that this is okay. So next to this, this is two, there's two uh, uh, rapid chargers here, and one of them is blocked in by a BMW that is not an electric BMW. Anyway, other than that, it's all brilliant. Who would do that? A tosser. So I think this car would be, you know, I can't recommend it highly enough. If you, if you don't need a big SUV, and who does? But if you, you know, this is a sensible car that uses, uses less material, less energy, is easier to look after, is easier to park in a city. God, I mean, it's, it parks in a tiny little space. It's a really small car. It's really useful. You know, I just think this is, I'm just raving about this car. I absolutely love it. I love driving it. So, I am really enjoying driving this car, it is brilliant. Now, as you can tell, the weather is utterly grim, so I didn't want to get out of the car. I mean, the poor camera crew, yes, they're standing in the rain, but they're tough, they're hard and they're young, they can take it. Not this poor old sausage. So that is really all we've got time for. If you get the chance to have a go in an e-up, 
exclamation mark, jump for it. Please buy one, because they're still making them. I just think this is the best little car I've been in for donkeys. Well, for six years since I last drove it. Um, so please do have a look at the uh, Patreon link that's beneath this uh, episode. That's, that's how we make these shows. Uh, do subscribe to Fully Charged. Have a listen to the Fully Charged podcast. Easy to find if you go to fullycharged.show, the fabulous webpage. And that's all. If you have been, thank you for watching. Thank you.